everybody, Carl Gould here. You know, I wanted to address the question that I get all the time about the difference between activity-based thinking and outcome-based thinking. And, and you might say, well, if you're setting a goal, what's the difference, difference as long as you achieve your result? But think about this for a minute. You know, just because you're busy or just because you're taking on an activity, it doesn't mean you get the result. And it doesn't mean you get there efficiently or, if in business, profitably. However, if you employ results-based or out Act, uh, sorry, outcome-based thinking, all you care about is getting the results. And you can be very Machiavellian about this, meaning the end justifies the means. So think about this for a second. Let's take sales for just a minute. What's the, what's the outcome or the result you're trying to get in sales? Well, the result is that you want to sign a client you know, for your product or service and, and hopefully make a profit doing that. Well, how you get there isn't nearly as important as the fact that you get there, right? Now, there's a lot of activities you can do in sales. You can network, you can give a proposal, you can have a meeting, you can have a phone call, you can do a follow-up, give your pitch, submit a proposal. None of that guarantees that the, uh, the prospect becomes a client. However, if you look at your process and you say, what steps do we absolutely have to do at a minimum to get the maximum result? you might find out that there's some things that you stop doing. So think about this. When you're trying to achieve a result, take a list, take a, make a list of the activities that you normally do in order to get that result and then say, what is the minimum I have to do in order to achieve that result? And you might find that you make yourself much more efficient because you're eliminating activity for activity's sake in order to get the result that you need. Also, here's the other benefit. If you go with an outcome-based approach as opposed to an activity-based approach, it does give you more options. Let's take weight loss, for example, or getting in shape. So imagine you're saying uh, an activity-based uh, approach would be, I want to go to the gym three times a week. And you know, and you say, okay, well, what happens if you can't get to the gym? What happens if you're traveling? What happens if it rains? What happens if you can't get there? Well, I guess you lose your outcome, right? Because you've limited yourself by one activity. Whereas if your outcome was, I want to be in the best shape of my life and reach a certain body weight percentage and have a certain level of stamina or aerobic capacity, well, there's many ways to do that. I can work out at home. I can, I can, uh, you know, just do activities that are more manual and labor, manual or labor intensive, and I can get to my outcome using a variety of activities. So get away from busy work. There's so many things that can occupy your time every day. You don't need another thing to do. I don't know anyone who's not busy, but I know a lot of people who don't get anything done, right? And I know people who get a lot done that don't seem all that, all that busy. There is no honor in being busy. There's a lot of honor in getting things done. And that's what, if you're an employee or you're an owner, that's what your clients, your internal clients, meaning you're, you're inside your company, and your external clients, meaning the people that buy from you, they demand problem solvers right now. So employee, outcome-based thinking, results-based thinking, go straight to the result, then work your way backwards. What are all the options, all the ways I can get there, and how can I minimize the steps in order to get there? Outcome-based thinking. It's working smarter, not harder. I hope you found this valuable.